Hey everybody, welcome back to Avid Max Tying Tuesdays. My name is Brady Lair and today we're tying a special fly for you. This is kind of the firehole special of a Purple Prince Nymph. They have this great hook-based management system uh, that includes the tungsten bead provided by firehole. This is one of the plated versions, the black nickel. You have the bug collar. This is the radiant purple color to add a hot spot and also identify what you have underneath. And then the last piece here, which is kind of the most innovative piece in my opinion, is the teardrop body. So this is a tungsten uh, slide on teardrop body. So you don't have to do the ones that just sit on top of the hook that can be hard to tie in. This one's fixed on your hook and uh, creates your taper, hides underneath, works super well. So the first thing we're gonna do with this system is set that teardrop body in place. And for that, all I'm gonna do is drop in a little bit of UV Use the thin so that it kind of slips on down in there. And we're just going to fill that slot. And then I'm going to go ahead and flip it over because I like the slot to be on the bottom. And we'll cure it right in place. From there we can start tying. I'm going to start with my UTC thread. And this is the 70 denier purple color. Which will finish nicely with that bug band. We just start our thread right behind that teardrop body. With some locking wraps. And we can go right into tying our tail in. So we're going to use the goose biots for this. We'll grab a couple of those and strip them right off. And we can clip off the ends and marry them in reverse so that the bevels are facing outward. And make sure that those tips are aligned about the same length there. And then we can measure out, we're gonna do a stubby tail, so three quarters to a half of what that hook shank is. Transfer that to the back and go ahead and grab that on down. Do a couple of loose wraps to get them where you want them. And then you can pull down and tight and that'll set them in place. And you can work back. I always like to use my finger to split them as I go back and position them where I want them. We'll work a little ways down this hook shank, giving some curvature to this pattern, elongating it to be a nice, large nymph. Really an attractor pattern, using this purple color. It's a great option for fast water, deep holes, anywhere where there's not a lot of light penetration. But you know there are big bugs down there and big fish eating them. This fly is gonna get you into that zone nice and quick. So we'll trip out that excess biot. I'm gonna use it to help transition up onto the teardrop body there. Try and capture it all down. Trim out that weird looking piece there. And we'll just build that taper. It's really crucial with these teardrop bodies that you build a nice, slow taper up onto it so that you're not sliding down back off. You need something at the end to keep you going forward and our dubbing is going to help us with that as well. So we'll just work that out a little bit here and then go on back and let our dubbing do the rest of the work. So I'm going to create a noodle with some UV done. This is a nice purple color of ice dub. And grab a little bit out and just start to work our noodle and build our body. Great summertime pattern on a lot of western rivers. Found that purple nymphs tend to work really well in the Colorado and the tributaries of the Colorado, specifically the Williams Fork. I've had good success there. Doing a size 12 today. You could tie this anywhere from eight on down. And don't be afraid to tie it in smaller sizes as well. Doing just a nice big heavy one for us today. So we're gonna use that UV done, continue our taper out. Nice and bulky for this one. Working forward is the name of the game. And that teardrop body really helps you create that taper nice and quick.
We're gonna go up, just leave ourselves a little bit of room behind the bug band there. Bug bands are great because it adds that hot spot that you might have done with dubbing in the past. Helps you identify your flies as well and the weights of your flies. You can look in, if you tie all of your purple collars with an X teardrop body and tungsten bead to match, then you know when you look in your box exactly how that one's gonna sink for you in any given situation. So once we get on forward there, we're gonna leave myself, like I said, just a little bit of room to tie in some hackle. And I'm just gonna use a dry fly hackle, but we're gonna tie it in like a, a soft hackle. So we'll find ourselves an appropriate size here. And I'll use that hook cape to kind of gauge that out. And then I like to start when I'm doing this type of tying or this type of hackle, I like to start with the tip. And it tapers it in reverse for me. So we'll secure that to the hot side of the hook shank there. And then we can clip out that extra bit. Any stray fibers. Make a nice even base for us to wrap against here. And then we can palmer that on forward. Do a half hitch to stay in place. And so I'm gonna pull this upward and I'm gonna do it like a soft tackle. We're gonna grab it and tease those fibers in reverse. And again, a little wax on your fingers can help mold and control what these barbels are all doing. We'll pull them all outward first and then we can reverse them and if you pinch them as you wrap them you can kind of get them to all lay back as you go. Create a nice little collar that'll help add movement to this fly when it's fished. We'll go around three or four times here. Making sure that it's laying back for us. Just like so. And we can capture that with our thread. And this purple UTC blends really nicely with that bug band. Just trying to hold everything in place. We'll cut out those stray ones that I missed there. Do a little cleanup work. Before we tie in our final material here. Do a couple of wraps right back behind on top of it. Give ourselves room to tie in this last biot and also help those fibers lay backwards. So I'm gonna pull another goose biot, just doing the white, the traditional wing on your Prince Nymph here. Remember wing buds. And clip them out and do the same thing we've done on the tail in that regard, but we're gonna tie these in individually this time. I just prefer to do so. Kind of measure out the length of that body, keep it cocked to one side, and capture it in place. And we'll do the same thing with our second one here in reverse. Get it to that same length. Hold it, and we can do one loose wrap, kind of see where we're at, make sure they're the same. Pull it back a little bit if you need to and then give some firm wraps to hold them in place. And I like to do a couple on top, pull those ends in reverse, sneak a couple in front, that'll get them to flare up and out of the way for you so you can clip them off nice and close. 
before coming over top and finishing up with a whip finish. So I think they say there's over 600 combinations that you can do with these new bug bands and teardrop bodies in hole. I'm um, using the fire hole hooks. A lot of stuff to explore there, a lot of materials to utilize to get creative with. Some of your longtime favorite patterns you can take if you use the lead wrap. Move your switch on over to Tuxton. It's going to be denser, it's going to be heavier for the size that it is, and it's more environmentally friendly as well. So, some really cool benefits out of these new fire hole products that I think a lot of people are going to utilize and find some, some creative designs out of.